Hi gang, Scott Davenport here, and today's video is on One Photo Raw and the difference between mask opacity and mask density. The two are similar, but there are some differences between them, and I'll show you what that's all about in just a second. But first, a shameless plug on One Photo Raw Essentials. The book's available now. I do have a print book of what's been a very popular ebook over the years. It's on Amazon now as well, so you can pick it up on Amazon. You're an Amazon shopper, check it out. Uh, books ready for you. You can grab it right away. So let's take a look here at this photo and talk about the difference between mask opacity and mask density. Let me just use this color adjustment as an example. So let me turn it off and on really quick. You see those greens are really coming through and I've amped this up pretty strong so we can see it in the video. But a side effect is I'm getting a lot more green on these rocks here. The mosses in that uh, rock area right before after. They're popping up a lot and I really don't want that. So this would be a great job for masking. And so let me just do a quick paint job on this thing here. Grab a brush. We'll paint out. And here's the first thing. Opacity. Right now I have opacity set to 100, which means full strength. I'll remove this entire color adjustment from these rocks. And let's make that brush really big. Get through there and we can see that green is getting toned back down some. And let's do that. I'll press the O key, check my mask overlay. Oh, I've got my perfect brush on. Let's turn that off and just clean that up without the perfect brush. There we go. All right. So that's at 100% strength opacity. So opacity is when we are brushing and we're shaping that particular mask. We have opacity for masking bugs as well. Uh, let's redo that with a, a slightly less opaque mask. So I'll reset that mask. I'm still in paint out. And let's take that down to say, do 50%. There we go. Paint this out again. And now some, but not all, of this color is being removed from this area. And if I turn on the mask overlay with the O key, you notice it's kind of this lightish gray. The mask is not completely black. It's not completely concealing this particular color adjustment. It's doing it partially. Now, if I do another brush stroke, actually I'll keep my mask on for that. Another brush stroke of 50% opacity. I'm gonna add another 50%, right? So I'm gonna get even darker. And then I could do it a third time. And then finally I'll, I'll eventually get to pure black if I've added enough brush strokes. So opacity is useful when you're trying to either build up a look or tone it down. You saw a video I did last week about dodge and burn using like lighter brush strokes to slowly build up a look. That's where opacity comes into play. Now let's do uh, this. We'll take this up to 100%, reset the mask, and let's just paint that 100% mask all the way through here again. There we go. And I'll leave that mask view on for a second. Well, I'm just a little corner there, all right? Now let's take a look at density. What does density do? Well, the density slider is over in individual filters or layers right here underneath the masking tools. So if you didn't see the masking tools, click on the little mask icon. You get all your tools here. Now as I take density down, notice that the mask is getting lighter. I can take this mask down to 50%. So the end result right now is the same. I could have painted at 50% opacity, or I can paint at 100% and lower the density of the mask to 50. So why would I want to do one or the other? Well, if you're doing a mask around an object where you have to be very careful about where you're brushing, but say you only want to affect the object partially, like maybe you're adding 25% extra saturation or something like that, I find it easier to paint with 100% opacity. That way I can just do all my brush strokes. I don't have that situation of if I have to stop brushing and restart brushing where I have overlapping brush strokes and I get more of an effect there. It's harder for me to paint a uniform area with a partial opacity brush. But I can paint the whole thing at once and then dial it back with this density slider. So that's one uh, use that I have for density. A second one is when I use luminosity masks. And that let's do that with a different filter and show an example of that. Turn off the mask view there, and let's add a sun flare to this scene. Let's do uh, a sun star, and uh, I like the, the second one here. And for this 
photo, let's position the sun star way up here. All right, so right now this is kind of strong. It's overpowering the trees. And something I like to do with my sun flares is apply a luminosity mask. So I'll add the luminosity mask. Now that really darkened things. We hit the view here. See that mask is really, really strong. Now I could take a brush and start removing parts of the mask and so forth, but it's a lot faster for me to use the density slider. So if I start backing away the density, we'll start to see some of that sun flare come back in. I go all the way down to zero. It's like I had no mask at all. But I can play with this and introduce some of that flare to bend in and around the darker areas. If I view the mask again, you can see I've still got a pretty reasonably dark mask on those trees, but I'm opening things up in the foreground and I can get a nice looking, natural looking sun flare, in this case before and after, leveraging the density of my luminosity mask. Now there's no way I'm going to paint a luminosity mask by hand. And yeah, I could grab a brush at say, let's see, what did I do here? I did 54 density, right? So I could do the math and say, okay, 54. Well, then be like, uh, I don't know, what is that? 46, so I can go down to like 46, and then I'm gonna paint out, I'm gonna make my brush really, really big and start painting away everywhere, you know, and I'll just hit the O key here. You can start to see I'm, I'm kind of, uh, well, actually I want to paint in on this one. You know, I can kind of start adding some of that stuff back in and end up at the same place. But I had the same problem with brush strokes. I just stopped brushing. If I start again, uh-oh, I'm doubling up on my brush strokes. That's going to be kind of a problem. Well, it's much simpler for me to say luminosity mask and start backing off the strength of that mask to something that looks pleasing. So that's the difference between mask opacity and mask density. Another way to think about it is mask opacity is when you are actively brushing. You set the opacity and start brushing with that opacity. Mask density lets you change that strength of that mask after you've created the mask. So they do complement each other and there's different situations where it might be easier to paint in at full strength, back it off with density, or in the case I just showed you, a luminosity mask, it's a great place to use density so you can very quickly strengthen or weaken that particular luminance mask. Hope you found the video useful. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.